Hello and welcome to uh, this week's live stream from the Bravo Zulu series of live streams by D4H. Uh, D4H is software to manage your uh, response team. It's uncomplicated emergency management software. And we're going to get on to today with somebody who's an expert in it, who's got a fantastic configuration done. And if you want to see what they're showing, it's on d4h.com. So let me introduce this person. Uh, I'm I'm excited for this one. Uh, we've got uh, Scott Nielsen, who is the Emergency Management Coordinator at Monmouth County Office of Emergency Management. Hey, Scott. Hey, Robin. How are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. This is going to be a great live stream today. While, while people are joining, I got to remind everybody that this is this is live. Um, you can, you're watching us uh, here on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on X, on Facebook, wherever you're picking up this stream. If you reply in any of those comments to the to the live stream, they pop up here in front of Amy, who's the producer in the background. Amy's pulling all the levers, making uh, everything look nice for us. And Amy's able to show the comments up on screen to Scott and myself, and we'll be able to answer your questions. And uh, they may be about how Scott's configured something or how what they do or the difference in their county to yours. So it's always interesting to get, get these uh, comments. So, Scott, you're in Monmouth County, New Jersey. Yep, we're uh, central New Jersey uh, or, or referred to as the Jersey Shore area. Uh, yeah. In New Jersey. And and I was I was there two weeks ago, and you were somewhere else. We tried to meet, but uh, you were at another conference. Yeah, we were. I was at the emergency preparedness conference uh, in uh, Cleveland, doing a little presentation with the county health department. So we we didn't uh, cross cross paths there. What's that conference like? Uh, that was good. That was a, a conference uh, more on uh, public health, but uh, mm -hmm. it was a lot of integration of public health and emergency management, especially since uh, COVID nineteen. On you know working together, and it, uh, it seems that we were the model agency as you know, us and our health department work mm. well together often and uh, we speak daily and we're, we're well integrated with each other, even though we're separate departments and fall under different division heads, uh, we work mm. well and, and communicate often. Excellent. And um, what was your presentation on? What did you talk about? Uh, so it was the um, response to COVID and how basically Monmouth County um, did uh, mass vaccinations uh, on their own with little to no help. Um, okay. from, you know, outside sources to get that done. So it was a nice presentation from the health department and, and you know, the health department is one of the agencies that um, kind of kicked off us moving to D4H and, and, and helped us with some of the funding for that. So uh, it was, it was an honor to go there with them. Yeah. Awesome. And, and so, yeah, you, you didn't have D4H during, during COVID and during that response. How have you seen emergency management change? You've 20 years experience in this. Have you seen emergency management change with the introduction of technology? So I started my career at the sheriff's office uh, just a little over 20 years ago uh, in the 911 center mm -hmm. and uh, started as a 911 public safety telecommunicator and then kind of uh, rose through the ranks there at the 911 uh, center, uh, becoming supervisor or I should say training coordinator, then supervisor, uh, accreditation manager. And then uh, when my predecessor retired here, uh, I took over for Mike about two years ago in emergency management, and uh, thankfully for our sheriff, uh, Sean Golden, is a high technology sheriff and, and involved. So he likes the high technology and, and mm -hmm. let the software do the work. So, you know, we really, you know, over years and years, um, we always try and make sure that we have the cutting edge technology and, and make sure that, you know, uh, not doing anything on paper. Uh, everything's, you know, well tracked and, and uh we didn't have an incident management or equipment management software prior to going to D4H. We utilized Excel spreadsheets to manage our equipment and our assets and our emergency management inventory. And uh, we had a, a ArcGIS based platform mm. for some damage assessments. And, and we started to try and build that out a little bit. And then uh, the New Jersey EMS task force uh, a couple of years ago shared an incident live with me, a sit rep with that with me. And I was like, what is this software? How do we get the software? I don't want to do a sit rep on Microsoft Word. And uh, then kind of went down from there. And, uh, you know, we, we demoed a few software and, and we 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 like D4H because of the ability to 
modify a board, a dashboard, fix something quickly on the fly without any real admin backend help. So we didn't need a, uh, a specialist that, you know, an IT guy to make a change. I mean, take a couple of days. We have a problem or we want to add something to a form or a dashboard. You know, we can do it real time. So, yeah, I love these photos going by. Um, I think I remember that the demo actually when we were trying to get get you a demo of D4H, and you kept getting called away to calls, and we got you on a call, and then you said, "Oh, you, you took a phone call. I have to take this phone call." And you came off the phone call, and you said. I think it was something like a care home or a hospital fire. There was something being evacuated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you said, I, I I have to go. I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh, okay, we'll get them. We'll try try you again. We emailed, follow up, follow up. And then you said, they were using defrage at the incident and uh, I'm sold. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think it was a, uh, it was a um, uh, air conditioning failure at one of our large oh, hospitals. Okay. Yeah, okay. and we wound up. Uh, yeah, we were there. Yeah, then that's the inc one of the incidents where they were using it, and I said, "That's it. We need it." So, excellent. Yeah. Love that. What what type of incidents do you get in in the Jersey Shore area or in in Central New Jersey? And for people that I mean, when I was there last week, flew into New York and maybe thirty minutes south. Uh, with New Jersey minutes, traffic, forty five minutes with traffic probably. Okay. I mean, you yeah, can get to minutes. us uh, by uh, bus, car, uh, train, or ferry. So we, so we have all. It's, it's, yeah, it's a significantly urban and populated area. And then you've got this Atlantic coastline hammering you as well with weather, which is what I, I noticed when I was there. It was uh, windy and a lot of waves uh, and very gray and, and wet. Um, uh, and and it's, I, I laugh because I, I got back to Dublin. So I'm for people, people following along, I'm based in Dublin, Ireland, and, and Scott's obviously in New Jersey. And I was in Dublin City the next day. And there was a bus with a huge ad on it saying, come to Atlantic City. And it was all sun and shining and beaches and uh, people swimming. And it was very, very different uh, in winter. Um, so so what type of incidents do you get? I mean, I'm thinking this is like the climate is hitting you there in terms of waves, weather, wind. What is it? Yes, we get all that. I mean, we're, we're a pretty large county. So we're you know 662 square miles. We generally have about a population of about 640,000 people. So, you know, we're a pretty diverse county. We, we go all the way for uh, an urban area uh, and, and 27 miles of coastline to uh, the west part of the county, which is, you know, a lot of farm, although it's starting to get built up. So, you know, just like every uh, emergency management agency, 90% of our work is preparedness. But, you know, we do get the uh, a lot of flooding lately, a lot of windstorms. We're, we're expecting some decent weather today as well. Um, you know, we had an earthquake uh, last week, so that's, that's right. not yeah. that's not normal for us um, in our area. Although we didn't have a lot of damage, it did you know cause a little bit of a stir in the county. And then you know the same same emergencies most people deal with: uh, uh, fires and um, power outages, long term care centers or hospitals. And you know when nobody knows you know who to call, uh, you know they usually call OEM or emergency management. Um, you know we are susceptible to hurricanes. You know the the you know, the big one was Superstorm Sandy with us uh, a little 10, 10 years ago. And uh, so we, we kind of have to always take an all hazards approach with it. And mm. we deal with, you know, cold weather and snow and we get all four seasons. And usually we get sometimes we get them all in the same week. So uh, it could be, you know, snow in one day and then it's, you know, 70 and sunny the next day. So, um, you know, today we're going to get some wind and rain. But, you know, the, the you know, the pandemic, just like everybody else. And, um, you know, we have some major highways, so we have uh, hazmats and, you know, crashes and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a, it's a busy, every day is different. That's for sure. And you, you, um, you collaborate in with lots of other community organizations, community leaders. I see a lot about your CERT team online. Yeah, we started our, uh, our CERT team, for those who are not familiar, a community emergency response team. It's uh, basically a volunteer uh, team. And, uh, you know, it's not just me. I, I should say that I have a full staff here of seven people and it takes a village and everybody's got puts a good role in. But uh, our CERT team, you know, uh, is volunteers that take some basic training to help emergency management uh, during disasters. And uh we, we've done two, we started that uh, under a year ago. We did two classes. We have uh, 54 active members and, uh, you know, they're, they're the reserve forces where I would love to have 54 people on staff all the time, but there's just not that kind of emergencies. When we have that, that large scale incident, for instance, uh, this coming weekend, we have a, uh, an exercise we're doing, which is uh, a point of distribution. 
So, you know, the CERT team can supplement the staff and it's a force multiplier. And, uh, you know, besides that, we do a lot of community outreach. So we, we have some programs called uh, Register Ready, where those that are uh, may need assistance in evacuation during the disaster, we go and do outreach to them, help them register if they can't register themselves. Uh, we have uh, two programs that are with the acronym STORM. So seniors taking on readiness measures and students taking on readiness measures, which, uh, you know, the sheriff's been a great supporter of. And it makes sure that, you know, we can go out to the community and um, give them a little preparedness information and they complete the course to get a preparedness kit to kind of help them prepare themselves. So we, we try to engage with the community as much as we can because, you know, it, it's our thought process. If if they're prepared and then that's one less person that will need our help in an emergency. Mm, excellent. Well, it'd be great to bring up D4H. I, I don't know which would be more interesting first for you. You can pick equipment or, or incident management. Um, it'd be fantastic to... Yeah, I, th I think we'll uh, we can pull up a um, incident management probably first. Yeah, and, and uh, you know we have a, a big video or, or a high tech um, emergency operations center here. We also have uh, you know in all the command staff offices and throughout the facility we have uh, TVs you know where it displays this information. So one of the key things for us or important to us is is situational awareness. So we are heavy users uh, on the dashboard and, and i think mm -hmm. that's probably why i'm on the on the stream today is because uh everybody loves those cool dashboards but you know we uh we keep an incident running uh per year right so we we, we or or play as it's called mm -hmm. in each land but we want to make sure that you know we're having uh, real-time situations for the everyday events of what's going on so mm -hmm. the screen you're seeing here is our everyday dashboard and and uh one of the goals for me and my entire team is to not only use a software three or four times a year, you know, that I want everyone to be familiar with it. So we really use our uh, software every day, all day, and we utilize it um, for our register ready participants, which you're seeing here in the middle where, you know, we have just over 3,500 uh, residents that are registered for assistance. We uh, utilize it for, exercises or drills where the municipalities monmouth county has 53 different municipalities and uh, we do a lot of exercises drills with them matter of fact this week right now we're doing a a, a drill for resource requests so we are uh, tracking their participation so they have a whole week to basically put in uh, requests for resources to us through the state system and do logs on uh, it's an ArcGIS based system. So we're tracking their participation how many towns have already participated. Uh, a lot of them are closers on Friday afternoon. So they'll, they'll do it the last thing on Friday afternoon. But, you know, it keeps a good, uh, you know, good situation awareness of who's participating in the drill of the drill. Uh, we keep track of our CERT team members and their availability. So we can kind of see you know, uh, who's available. If someone says, hey, I'm not available for medical reasons or I'm traveling or let us know, we'll, we'll go in there and mark them unavailable. So we kind of know what our what our force multiplier is. And then, uh, you know, even crazy things, we wind up keeping track in there. We keep track of uh, interns that have been, are scheduled to come and rotate through OEM and who completed it. It, it, it uh, D4H does a nice export into a PDF so we can Kind of run our monthly reports on there and kind of say hey how many interns what the hours they were at what time they're coming um we even um moving down keep track of some training classes that staffs are scheduled for or mm. are in progress or uh even if it's a class they're looking for maybe it's hard to find and and uh my brain can't really remember all that data anymore when someone's looking for uh you know an ics 2200 class uh, we, they'll put it in there for my staff and say, hey, I'm looking for this class. So if I get an email and a class notification, I can kind of look on that dashboard and say, mm. hey, who's looking for this class? And hey, this class is available. So um, also a lot of our grants have a, a training requirement to them. So what we do is when someone goes in and, and kind of uh, completes a course, you know, we'll put in there the name of the course, the date, uh, who took it, their status, if they completed it, and how many hours. So at the end of the month, end of the quarter, we can quickly input that information into the grant reporting system for us. So, um, you know, we're re really happy about that. And we even set it up so that we can upload the attachment of the certificate in there so that at the end of the year, 
uh, we can kind of pull that whole report for the whole year, archive it, export it into a zip file and save it. And we have all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, the, awesome. you know, we do some the usual emergency management stuff in there too. You know, we resource requests from, from uh, during an emergency and uh, tasks, community events, uh, our shelter capacity, which, um, you know, we're happy to keep track. We, we always want that to be zero. We don't want to have to open any shelters. But uh, um, and then uh, one of the things we took from our another county in the north, uh, which already created their the uh, preliminary, or excuse me, damage assessment dashboard. And uh, D4H got that thing where you can share the uh, pack with another county. So we didn't have to build it. We just kind of borrowed it from them. Oh, nice. And, uh, so they're, they're the extension packs where you yeah. can. Yeah, so anyone can package up, and you're going to get some requests after this video, I think, for your boards, but anyone can take any of these and pack them up and, and share the file with another user. Yeah, and, and I think most emergency management um, agencies are familiar with the, you know, the FEMA categories and, uh, uh, you know, the, the, they built it for us and sent us to pack and, you know, we might have tweaked it a little bit to do that information, but, mm -hmm. you know, we, we uh, you know, we'll gladly steal that pack for that, that's that's for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, thankfully we haven't used the damage assessment yet since we've been live with D4H, uh, incident, although we did have one, uh, damage assessment storm, uh, we did it the old way and we inputted it in afterwards to make sure mm -hmm. we didn't have any bugs or anything like that. We didn't, and, and that worked really well for us. So, uh, you know, not that we want an emergency, but we're prepared for damage assessment and, and to do that, that type of information on there and, and input you know, all the D4H stuff, including photos and files and, uh, you know, damage to kind of help us get through it. So, um, and we, uh, my team probably hates me and the staff, uh, you know, TJ and Stephanie, uh, Mike and Gene and uh, Robin Ed, because every day I kind of come up and say, hey, can we, can we institute this into D4H and uh, how do we do that? And one of the things just this week, we just, um, started instituting the um, emergency planning community right to know and throwing all of that that data in there so that when we have an incident, we can uh, see on the map where all those facilities that submitted their right to knows and see it on the app. So if we're have a nearby incident where a, a facility has a particular type of chemical that we need to be concerned about, now mm. we can kind of see that on the map and uh, switch uh, screens here real quick for you here. Um, and, and as you can see, we build that stuff out on our map, which is, you know, as you see, yeah, it keeps, awesome. keeps blowing out. But you can see, you know, if we had an incident near this facility, uh, we would know and, and be able to see that. And now I don't have to worry about seeing those uh, right to know forms on my computer in, in our headquarters. I can see it right there because we, we upload the attachment into the into the file and we can we can see the attachment in the field. And we're, we're kind of really happy about that. So um, and and. So the alternative to that, let's say, is to use something like Esri ArcGIS to ha to host that data. Yeah, and we're a big uh, ArcGIS shop, but the, you know the convenience for that is when we have an ArcGIS layer, just kind of like you see here, um, we can import that in and, and put that layer on there. And, and some of the imported layers you'll see in here on my screen is you know municipal boundaries, all the police stations, fire stations, you know the dams, the long-term care centers, hospitals, mm. schools. And, you know, that was one of the things that, you know, the sheriff was really concerned is that we put a lot of a lot of hard work into Esri and ArcGIS, you know, is this software kind of replacing it? And it's it's an addition to mm. uh, which is nice. Well, and, and the GIS, you hear a lot of people doing like case management in D4H on their yeah. GIS data. Effectively. Gotcha. OK, yeah. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, you know, the, the number one, the, the game changer for me is the situation report. So, you know, the, the, the ability to share a situation report yeah. live link or, or to individual emails, um, it saved me probably 30 or 40 phone calls for the recent earthquake alone. You know, we spun up an incident report, or excuse me, situation report, started putting all the data in there, shared the live link to the, the command staff, the county administration, the county elected officials, and uh, they didn't have to call me and ask me a question. Everything they wanted to know mm. uh, was getting entered in that, that that dashboard. And for the one or two people that did call me, I gave them the old, hey, did you see the email I sent you? Click on there, that information. And uh, it's nice because, you know, my, my public information officer for the sheriff's office is not a D4H user per se. But now, Cynthia, if I send her that link, she has all that real-time data 
uh, to update our social medias and do you know a press release if it needs to be without really needing to do a, an update on a phone. So it saves us a lot of time there. And mm. uh, you know the, the live link from the situation report is phenomenal. It's easy to share. You can you know just share by a public link or share via email. And and, and we're you know that was the game changer for me. One of the other concerns for me was you know it's a live document and if we have a multi-day incident you know how do we capture it at the end of the operational period and and you know i can just take a snapshot on it on d4h mm -hmm. and and uh put it in the file and, and save it so you know that's one of the uh you know things uh and you know i guess based on the uh the the, the plan i saw that question pop up uh concurrent incidents and uh, you know based on the channels at our agency we did five concurrent plays at the same time which i'll uh, throw up on the screen here um so right now we we essentially burn a play for our everyday one but you know we can do multiple um incidents at the same time very easily which which is nice so i have i have three running right now i have a a small little power issue at my community college where there we deployed an asset for generator and uh we we're we're planning for our exercise on saturday for our uh, point of uh, distribution, so we're so, you know. It's so nice I, should, I should I should I should introduce you guys. N Nico, I recognize the name is in New Zealand, Coast Guard New Zealand. Okay. Um, so, so they use they use D4H at the moment, and have, and have done a live stream like this as well. And and I get where he's where he's going into is you're running a daily channel to manage your daily ops, and he's wondering do you run the small incidents then in that channel, or no, you're you're starting separate channels for an incident. Okay. Yeah, we're starting a separate separate channel for that or play for that. So, you know, every day, you know, 360 days a year, generally it's the everyday board when we have those, you know, large incidents and we're, we're spinning up, we're spinning up another thing. And it, it's very easy to switch to that in two seconds. I go on the computer, I change it on the display and the whole the whole building changes over to the to the focused incident, essentially. We we should talk a bit about that because uh, people won't be familiar. So you're 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 actually feeding in a monitor into a TV system within the building, and yeah. you can choose what what's going on every screen in all the offices and meeting rooms and, and everything like that. Yeah, I, it kind of works. Uh, like I said, the, the sheriff here is very tech savvy. It kind of works like a hotel TV system, mm -hmm. right? So every TV might have uh, twenty or twenty five different inputs. So they might have ten different TV channels where it's news feed. But then they have uh, an OEM assigned channel. They may have a camera assigned. So, like, if you look over here on my over my shoulder here, you'll see in my office I have the D4H uh, one. That's generally when I'm always on here. But uh, can can you bring that up, Amy? Uh, just full screen. Uh, bring Scott up. I think you can focus on him. Should go. I think Amy's got a couple of pictures of that as well. Oh, cool. Sorry, Amy. I meant the um, the picture of uh, of Scott. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. So, to, tell us there, Scott. So, what's on? What's happening at the TV behind you there? So, yeah, that TV monitor behind me is is the basically um, we'll call it our level four dashboard. So, it's our everyday mm -hmm. dashboard. Our, our normal operation is level four, and so that's displaying through all the buildings. So, you know, the law enforcement division right now uh, from our agency might not be on the OEM board. They may be on the maybe the weather radar on their screen. And they can choose the channel on their TV. Yep, they change the channel on their nice. TV. All of a sudden, we have an earthquake, and you know, mag magically everybody will be on the emergency management board and, mm -hmm. and be able to see that dashboard real time of what's going on. And uh, it's mirrored in our emergency operations center, all our conference rooms, all our classrooms. So even if it's a room that maybe not be used for an emergency, let's say our normal classrooms, uh, these feeds are in our classrooms. And during COVID, for example, we utilized one of our classrooms as a call center for a phone bank. So they have this they have the input feeds there. So uh, we have it in our um, our fusion center, uh, in our 911 dispatch center. It, it's available all over, and you can kind of customize what you see based on you know what, what your stuff is. It's super cool. And so OEM, can the officer emergency management, can decide what goes on their channel. And one of those things is the D4H dashboard at times, or an incident, or sit rep, or whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, you know, I think there's a there's a couple photos of uh, in in the rooms and and some people using our EOC and it's uh, it's real time. So the, you know the the power outages. You know, if we update power outages, it, you know, when a staff puts in an updated power outage, it updates for everybody in the building. Nobody has to call me and say, hey, how many power outages do we have? Or um, you know, how many uh, 
you know, emergency operations centers are activated from the municipal level. Everything is, is real time. And, you know, should we get to the shelter for the unlikely or hopefully it doesn't happen event of a hurricane or where we have to do some mass sheltering, you know, the capacity of the shelter is available in all our buildings. But in the shelter itself, since D4H is browser based, you know, they have a log on and they can, you know, see real time what their shelter is versus the other shelter. We, um, we even uh, slowly but surely built out our tasks um, for hurricane, for example, we start at 120 hours. So uh, we use the emergency support function model here. So when you sit down and log in and, and an EOC activation and you log in as uh, ESF2 for communications, you see all your tasks of you know, what you need to do in your job. And, and then the EOC manager and the emergency management staff can see real time the progress on those tasks. And, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had to use them yet. We've, mm. we've done a lot of uh, testing and, and we've done some, you know, um, if you see on my tasks here, if we get, we get back to show my screen that, you know, we, we use it for some ancillary tasks um, to kind of, you know, stuff that needs to be done at the warehouse, some implementation on D4H of, of projects that we're working on, stuff we want to, accomplished for the cert team and you'll see over here on you know some all tasks of uh you know different stuff that we have built out and and, and testing and working on so uh you know we're happy about that and and you know another great thing is you know the alert system we spin up a channel or a play or an incident it it, it sends everyone an email that they've been added to it automatically that's supposed to be added to it so our you know our, our intelligence room sees it even though they're maybe not heavily involved in it they're aware of something going on and kind of what we're spinning up so awesome I, I for people watching we are live if if you'd like to ask a question as well, well we'll go down that route we'll talk about that um while we're waiting on some questions to come in and if you want to do that just just comment uh, straight into the feed you're watching um scott we've talked a little bit about those dashboards and how you'd like the ability to maybe do some more reconfiguration of dashboard or grid possibly we can auto scroll it for you through a couple of different and screens can you talk a little bit about that and yeah so uh, you know with all computers and technology you know everyone's resolution is different everyone's eyesight's a little different everyone's got different uh you know i'm using um, sometimes i'm using my car on an ipad sometimes i'm using it on the app sometimes you know it's on big video monitors mm -hmm. so you know we we uh we, we would like to see it maybe snap a little better to a grid maybe mm -hmm. where if you yep. see like uh if I drag this over, it doesn't really doesn't really want to go up there yet because of just the amount of dashboards that I have on there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the D4H team, we we did a we did a team, uh, you know, Google Meet where we kind of went over some stuff that we want to see. And so, you know, I, I think that's coming down the road, right, Rob? Mm -hmm. Yep, correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yes. So you know, and I would like some more colors on it. You know, for me personally, that's uh, yeah. just because you know. You know, we get out of the white yet red yellow green we'd like to throw a little blue in there for some certain stuff like that um but you know overall what we had before that we, we're you know it's working tremendously for us mm. which, is, which is great and um you know the ultimate goal for me is eventually to share it with the municipalities so that they can kind of do some of their their input themselves and yeah. um and uh, you know partition it a little bit so obviously we don't want them touching you know our our cert team stuff but we want them to be able to put in their, you know, their outages or their their um, damage directly rather than us having to put it in for them. So that that is a big goal of ours. And, and um, you know, right now we're uh, an incident management user and equipment user. And uh, maybe we'll grow that. We'll see how that goes. But uh, we're happy with both products. Excellent. Uh, on the incident management, um, before we move over to equipment, the, one of the things we're 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 working on at the moment is this a new um, our internal name is a is a is control room for it but it's going to effectively be a uh, the main the day-to-day -day usage screen of uh operation center what we're looking at so and the idea is so you don't need that daily channel the idea is it should just be in in the software and you, you go in um we're introducing a new type of status board uh, that exists outside of an incident called an i mean it's effectively like your assets so Things like um, reception centers there on screen. Um, uh, uh, what else do you have? EO, uh, different EOCs and their status. You know all the different towns. So everything can exist as an asset in there uh, in a more permanent, more permanent piece. So. 
Um, comment in here, Peter, agree on having a bigger range of colors would be good for taskings, yeah. Um, there's actually, there's a nice feature I just saw went into that events piece. It's still pre-release, but I saw it today, got finished, which is the ability to, on a drop-down field, set a background color on each option. Um, so you can, you can ease, and it's any, lots of colors. <laughs> <laughs> we, we basically tried on, on D4H um, anything that we were kind of tracking on an Excel spreadsheet because, you know, D4H exports well and, uh, you know, anything that we, we normally would be trying logging, we, we tried to move in D4H. Two reasons. One, it, it looks great on the dashboard to get real time information. Two, it keeps every all the users very fluent with the software. Mm. And it's not like you're using it once in a while. And you know, it, it's great for reference. So like one of the ones we were talking about earlier today is uh, New Jersey has legislation called Code Blue, which falls on emergency management. And one of those things is we have to open warming centers anytime temperature falls below 32 degrees. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for us, when we issue that alert, we're, ab we're able to broadcast it over the channel. So it puts the bar on top and we're able to kind of track, you know, the date it started, the time it ended, any notes with that. And, uh, you know, I can, with a click of a button, when someone says, hey, how many code blues do we have? Or, you know, I can look and say, we had 21 code blues. These are the dates and times. And uh, I don't have to keep another Excel file spreadsheet that says code blue 2023, 20, 24. And, and we're real, really happy about that. And uh, awesome. it keeps, you know, keeps the users in the system at all times, which, which I love. And that, that's a pretty unique thing uh, you got there with that, that piece. Yeah, and that's a, well, that's a New Jersey thing. I think there's a few other states that do it, but you know, it, it's hard to keep track of and, and say, is code blue in effect today? Is it not in effect mm -hmm. today? So, you know, hey, we made a dashboard for it. You know, we put a log out that code blue is issued and, and we put a broadcast on it and everybody gets a notification. It's nice. Awesome. Can we jump over to equipment and take a look at what you've done there? Yeah, yeah. And uh, switch over to that. So uh, equipment's where we started. We started with the equipment. Uh, as a D4H customer, because uh, we have a lot of stuff. Emergency management has a lot of stuff. And uh, it seems everything we buy has a battery or gasoline in it or needs to be calibrated. And, uh, you know, we, we were like, uh oh, how, you know, we were doing crazy Excel spreadsheets. And um, so that's where we started. And then we, we quickly moved over to incident management as well. But uh, we have, uh, you know, just uh, just under 8,000 assets and growing every day tracked. And uh, we do everything from our vehicles to our um, disposable stuff like COVID-19 test kits to fire extinguishers, uh, tool batteries, um, vehicle services. And, and, and we got a pretty broad range. Uh, one of the good things... Cool. I'm seeing okay. over 7,000, over, uh, oh, yeah, over se nearly 8,000 items. Yeah, we're going to need more memory soon, Robin. Uh, but no, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, it, you know, if the number says 11.2 million worth of assets, it's probably going to double, I'd imagine, on that stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad we've got those last 11 ounces there on the weight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we get a lot of stuff that we purchase with grant funding or Homeland Security funding, where, yeah. which requires, you know, stringent tracking, you know, photos of it, inventory. So we barcode everything. We photograph it. We we assign it to a particular location. So if we get an audit, we know where it is. If we need to reorder it, we have the previous purchase orders. And, mm. you know, what, you know, in the world of emergency management, I guess generators is is something could like you open could you open an item that has a photo and yeah absolutely so we have a uh, 183 generators assigned to oem right now which which that's a lot of maintenance um we'll, we'll go over to our you know our towable generators um and you know we can see where they're strategically staged throughout the county uh, of our of our locations and then you know we can um kind of keep track of everything so if you look at like uh this one here uh, this is a uh, this is a monster generator, 625 kW generator. It's a big generator. It's currently deployed at at Brookdale, but um, all the information about that generator is in there. It'll load in a second since we're streaming. But um, you know, barcodes, who the responsible party is, uh, every time it's been serviced, the locations, any different kind of information on that is all in there, including uh, photos of the unit. So. You know, we, we uh, when someone says, "Hey, go pick up this trailer," we can say, "Hey, this is what it looks like," and uh, we tried to put 
you know, to reduce the amount of files we keep in there, uh, we tried to put three photos on one, one, one image. So that kind of makes three sides of it. Mm. And, uh, you know, the good thing about it is we, you know, we track all the information and when we tested it and, um, where it's supposed to stage in an emergency. So this particular generator is dedicated for uh, one of our backup shelters. And, uh, we, we have the map of, of where it goes and where it's supposed wow. to be and, and where it's supposed to park um on on the shelter side and everywhere it goes so it kind of makes you know our life nice and easy and kind of see where it goes and uh, for me that makes it very easy for me because i don't have to drive out somewhere in an emergency and say hey put the generator here i could say here you go here's all the information this is where it needs to go and uh good luck let me know if you have any problems so (laughs) brilliant Um, yeah and, uh, so, so this gives you a, sort of a, 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 a countywide insight into where all your equipment is, the readiness of it, uh, and 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 in terms of deployment plans and stuff to to go with that. Yeah, I mean, six hundred twenty-two square miles. You know, that's that's almost you know a forty-minute drive from one side of the county to the other. So, uh, looking for a missing generator, which I'm sure I'm not the only one that's been there, is, is not fun. So we, we make sure that we deploy it somewhere, it gets moved in on location and, and, and we can see everything where it is and, and service it when it needs to be serviced and track the hours. And, um, you know, this is kind of, this is our county outline kind of here. Uh, this is kind of showing you where everything is in our county that is uh, green is good, operational, uh, orange or, or amber is, hey, operational, but it's due for service soon or uh, red, which is out of service. So. We, you know, we, we kind of track it and we even put it when it goes to uh, our fleet services who, who they're rock stars and getting our stuff services. But when we mm. drop something off at the uh, small engine repair shop, you know, we mark it there. So we don't say, hey, where where did we drop that generator off a month ago? Or where's generator number six, um, which we've, you know, we've had several times. And, uh, you know, we, we do use a supply level for quantity. Um, it's sometimes been a little cumbersome if you accidentally put way too many in to remove them. And yes. uh, we, we once accidentally put like, instead of, you know, 4,000 COVID tests, we put 40,000 COVID tests in there and had to kind of remove them individually. That was a tough one for us. Uh, but, uh, they're, work, they're working on bulk actions. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually, I did a, uh, I kind of, I couldn't click through them and delete them anymore. I kind of did a computer script and I let it run overnight. To, to just kind of follow my mouth control. Of course you did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we kept, you know, we keep a good supply of all of our stuff and, and what we have on hand and, and it's real time. And, uh, you know, if the health department calls me and says, Hey, do we need to restock our COVID supply, our COVID test supplies? I could say, uh, not really. We have 13,000 in stock. Let's, let's kind of get rid of those supplies that we have there. Um, but you know, for us, it, it, it's, it's a lifesaver on time and maintenance. Although, you know, there's no, you can't really lie, right? So if uh, if we need a generator that needs service, we can't say, oh yeah, yeah, we started that last, last. you know, now you got to go there and, and service it and do the report and put that you mm-hmm. did it. So uh, it's good because again, you know, if anybody's familiar with the OEM world, the 625 KW generator is not used all the time. We got a call last Saturday to deploy it. I knew in my records, it was started two weeks ago. The air and the tires were checked. The fluids mm-hmm. were checked. It, it, it really is a lifesaver on that part for us. A lot of people who talk to you after this when they say, well, it must have taken you so long to get up and running with all this. Like, There's a huge amount of data you have in here. What was that process like from a, in, internally, I mean, gathering all the data and then sort of secondly with D4H getting started? What, how was that? Well, one, Marie from your team probably hates us because uh, on the implementation, after she hung up with the implementation, we went we went above and beyond because we wanted to get it up running quickly. Uh, but, you know, we had stuff scattered all over. We had it in a binder. We had it in Excel spreadsheets. We had it in Word documents. We had it handwritten. Mm. So, you know, my team's good here. Um, you know, they're all familiar with the product. But, you know, it's a lot to put input that stuff in there, mm. especially... You know, we had a lot of stuff that didn't have photographs. We had a lot. We had no barcode system, so we started that off when we went live with D4H. But the uh, the implementation was a couple of weeks with with weekly calls with the implementation team, and uh, I think after maybe the first or second meeting, uh, we hit the ground running. And you know, the goal was you know get as much stuff in there 
clean data, of course. We don't want to put any dirty data yeah. in there, but you know, it, it it really was a pretty good implementation, but it never stops, right? So, you know, we have a, a big delivery coming on um, on Monday. We're expecting for some inflatable shelters and stuff with it. And the team knows, you know, when it gets delivered, you know, the paperwork that gets shipped with it gets scanned into D4H. Mm -hmm. The equipment gets barcoded. It gets photographed and they either do it for their from their laptop or they come back to the office and implement their stuff in there. Um, you know, that the app is good. Uh, but again, you know, the amount of data that we have in here, um, you know, it's it's not feasible to try and do all that on the app. So, you know, we you know do it on a tablet. The good thing about it is, you know, for my iPad, the uh, the the app is not as sexy, I think, as the dashboards are on the screen. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just run Chrome on my iPad and I have the exact yeah. same same display. So, you know, it works. The app is great when I'm looking up a barcode and I want to see where it is and it's quick and fast. Yeah. Uh, but if you're really implementing lots and lots of stuff, uh, you know, the computer's where the, the web version's easier for sure. Yeah. And any other frustrations with, with anything with D4H? I mean, what what's the number one thing you'd want us to work on? Um, the number one thing I is probably, oof, I, I like to push you to your limit. I, I send emails uh, quite often, but uh, the uh, it's a tie between the um, the partitioning to roll it out to my towns. I think mm -hmm. to, to only allow them to do certain functions um, and and maybe only own it for them. I think that that's probably one of them uh, to get that. So, so that's it, like if is that that's where you want the um like a section of a form or part, just a form that they can see only their own town on yeah exactly yeah, yeah 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 and would that would in would that work well with the where they submit a survey kind of link in does that solve it or do you want them signing in to do it and find no no I, I think that was so for example i'll use a, a eoc activation um um let me switch screens here uh, share this tab instead so you know if a municipality activates their emergency operations center I would love for them to be able to just go in and activate their own mm -hmm. emergency operations center and not be able to touch the other towns and, yeah. and, and whether that's done on a survey, which is kind of how they do it now on a ESRI type base to do that, or they declare a state of emergency. You know, one of the things I need when you declare a state of emergency is I need your signed declaration. So if they could say, Hey, we're activating our, I'll pull that up real quick while we're here. Hey, we're, we're activating our state of emergency. It's the declared. And they could upload their PDF attachment of their signed declaration, and it changes real time for me. That, that's the next step for for us would, would be phenomenal for that. Okay, um, gotcha. Um, well, and hopefully, then, our, our asset piece will, will will help that. Yeah, and uh, I guess you know I want to include them on our sit rep of mm -hmm. what they're doing. So being able that for them to log on the sit rep as a as a municipality as opposed to a user. So I could say like. Uh, uh, one of our coordinators, uh, Buzz from Oceanport, he wanted to write, hey, Oceanport has this flooding on this street and, and it's major flooding and include it on our sit rep and us be able to say, yes, we want to include it, but it's from this town, not necessarily this user. Uh, that, that's the next probably thing I'd want to see there um, on, on that side of the house. And you know, again, I like to, I'd like to say we're probably uh, a super user maybe. I don't know if that's even a real term. Uh, De on definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, the things that I'm looking for are, 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 you know, things that I knew coming into it that D4H didn't have yet. But mm -hmm. I, I assume that once I started showing fancy dashboards, I could, I could talk Robin and, and GP and team and, and Marie to get that over to us. Um, and then, um, you know, the EMS task force uses it currently right now. And uh, I would love to have some kind of integration with them for, you know, I don't know if I want to say a user, but maybe a partner agency besides them just sharing their sit rep or us mm. being able to push data to them because, you know, uh, you know, we're partners, right? We're all in it together. So the county's working with, with the state and county's working with hospitals and the towns and, and to try to collaborate, even though we don't norm, might not collaborate a lot on a daily basis. Um, all of a sudden we have an incident. We want to be able to kind of, to, to kind of say, hey, add them to your team, essentially, or or however that works would be would be great. Um, and then, you know, I would love data to go in there without me having to type it in there. Some data, so I'd love to try and 
and get an API with our utility company so that it's kind of update in real time or yep. one of the things I sent uh, over to power outages. Yeah. power outages from poweroutages.us to kind of yeah. have an API implementation where it's, it's updating real time is now I don't have to go to their website once we get that implemented. Yeah, well, I understand. Okay, fantastic. Uh, there's so there's so much there, and um, hopefully a, a lot of that we can we can do for you. Uh, there's a couple of comments coming in um, from that's Search and Rescue South Africa uh, in, in Cape Town, by the look of it. Um, okay, Jason says being able to separate accounts specifically for hospital use cases will also be beneficial. Do you know Jason? That where I do, Jason. We're uh, we're uh, class four graduates of emergency management project together. Oh. We went to school together. He's a uh, uh, he's with the uh, one of the local hospital systems. Uh, and uh, again, that that it would be great for for same thing. You know, if they have a issue going on that they're sharing real time, because you know the issue might start off small for them, and and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. we're there assisting them, like we did with the uh, the air conditioning outage. And and Mike, who was from our office, uh, who retired and went with that system. You know, we have great partnerships with our healthcare. So you know. They have long-term care centers and, and hospitals and, uh, you know, that data sharing it would be great for us. So, so, so let's say, let's say on, on this, you, you kind of have this vi vision that at the moment with the task force, they have to give you permission to their account and they can give you a permission level and then you can press switch organization. You can jump into their account right. and see their data. Yeah. What do you envisage showing in your account automatically if you were if it was connected up um so the the ems task force in, in in new jersey is like a um they have a lot of assets that are co-assets essentially right so when they when they spin up an incident for uh one of the big things in new jersey is medical ambulance buses you know two of them are, are part of the county you mm. know so when when if they if one of their assets essentially is assigned or, mm -hmm. or our assets is assigned for their use, you know, some kind of notification through D4H that where we can keep an eye on that. I don't have to call them and say, hey, how long are you guys going to be out there um, to, to kind of find that information out? Um, gotcha. That, that, okay. That, yeah, and, uh, one, cool. of, one of the other things, you know, you asked me and I, and I said, I'm going to be honest on, on the stream. You know, uh, I found out the hard way during the earthquake. Uh, if I put something in the situation report manually, um, for example, I'll just go over to that. And if, if I put something in there manually, it doesn't go into the dashboard. I have to go into the dashboard for the dashboard to put it on the situational report, if that makes sense. No, it doesn't. Explain to me. So uh, like I put a resource request that we have on our on our sit rep. Yeah. Typed it in here, but it didn't link up as a resource request on our resource request dashboard. So whether we did that wrong on our end or, or it's not supposed to work like that. Uh, uh, it goes the, it goes the other way. That's yeah. what it is. So you've linked that table up. So if you, if you add it to the resource requests. Yeah. If I did it the other way, it would work. But it it, doesn't it work appears on the sit rep. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So I tried to cheat and throw it on the sit rep. Uh, and, okay. uh, uh, that, that is confusing because you can add it in both places. In yeah. Fairness. Um, but yeah. again, uh, that was, you know, a, a we know that now I learned it and we kind <laughs> yeah. of, uh, you know, uh, I learned my lesson quickly on, I'm like, why is it on this dashboard? What's wrong with this? So, yeah. Um, Amy, there's a, a, a question there from Dominic on external forms. So, so this is what we were just touching on there is external forms to populate for, uh, to populate a form in D4H, um, the roles would be huge in capturing data. Pure, put a QR code up. Yep. So our, our intention is, and it, it is scheduled for later in 2024, so it, it's fairly imminent, is that you'll be able to take, um, if you know D4H, a status board in D4H, which is a form behind each row, and you'll be able to share a, a public link for that for people to fill in data on that status board. Um, QR code or link, whatever way you want to do it, uh, they'll be able to, they'll, no username needed. They'll be able to open up the form a bit like a, a Microsoft uh, form. I think Microsoft forms it's called or a Google form or anything like that, a survey form. And you'll be able to answer questions in the form. When they hit submit, it's a one-time only submit into a new status board row in, in D4H. So you can imagine that being used for damage assessments from the field. You can imagine it being surveying people for polling people for things um just as you're talking there so that is scheduled for into this year um 
and then there's a say there's a follow-on saves the the joc joint operations center maybe team having to capture all of the data manually from paper forms when not everybody has access to d4h yep exactly what that's planned for cool excellent well i think that's a great great timing to end this on this has been fantastic scott thank you so much for your time um, well, I'm looking forward to uh, some of the new enhancements too. the alerting that you just put out where, where uh, I filled that form out the second I hit my email. Oh. Hey, we're in. Uh, <laughs> Alerting's we're coming in hot. It's coming yeah. in hot. I, tomorrow is our internal. Um, tomorrow is the internal uh, final checks on it, actually. So um, I think from Monday, there's going to be some testing, uh, customer based testing going on on it. So awesome. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amy, in the background there for, for coordinating that. Thanks, Scott. No problem. Thank you. Talk and everyone be safe. Talk to you soon.